Hey guys, what's up? Greg here. The Vinyl Rundown, Mother's Day weekend. This is a list of records that we bought uh, on Mother's Day weekend or for Mother's Day. You know my wife and I give each other a lot of vinyl records for holidays and gifts, so lucky lady, she got tons of records once again. Let me just go over some of these records and uh, hanging out at the record store. I might have bought a few things for myself. You know how that goes. Okay, here's the big, heavy-duty, cool stuff that she got. Interpol. My son got her this. Interpol Marauder. I know nothing about this record. It's for my wife, not me. Uh, let's see, does it say what year it came out? Interpol Marauder. Chained of no real code. Breaks bonds. I don't know. They're a cool group. My wife likes them. This is for her. I will get to hear it in a couple days. And let's see. This one I bought online for her. As to camera. She has most of their stuff. This is one of the few remaining ones that she didn't have. Oops, sorry. I'm going to adjust the focus just a bit here, guys. We're going manual focus today instead of... There we go. Aztec Camera Stray. Uh, hard to find this one. Had to search it a long time. Uh, promo copy. And just got this off of Discogs. Sire Records. Yeah, the vinyl looks pretty clean. Didn't actually uh, look at the vinyl all that carefully when we got it. All right. At the used record store yesterday, I got a couple things for her, a couple things for myself. Greg Kin. This was only in the 99 cent bin. Uh, she didn't even know this record. He, uh, kind of that, this is 1975 on Berserkly Records. And, uh, who's ever heard of Berserkly Records? I don't know. He had a couple hits later on, probably the early 80s, kind of what we call, I call jangly wimp rock. That's what I like to call it. But anyway, Greg Kin. Actually, Hannah from Omaha mentioned Greg Kin recently. She got some more popular Greg Kin in one of her VLCT boxes. All right, here's the biggie for the present. One of the few Tom Petty's that she didn't have, Tom Petty. Uh, Full Moon Fever. A lot of good hits on here. Free Falling, Won't Back Down, Face Face in the Crowd. Uh, Zombie Zoo. Produced by Jeff Lynn with Mike Campbell. All right, that's a good one. This is uh, one of the petty ones that's popular and still not too hard to find. All right, what else did I find at the record store? A few things for myself, would you believe it or not? A couple of weird things. Let's see. What do we got here? Very strange record. Lalo Schifrin. Why did I want Lalo Schifrin all of a sudden? And uh, we've got too much light over here. I'm going to close this window. I think we got too much. I think we're too hot on that side. Okay. Lalo Schifrin, super famous uh, composer, conductor. You all know him from the, uh, what do you call it, theme? Not Hawaii Five-O. Mission, Mission Impossible theme. So anyway, why was I thinking of Lalo Schifrin? Well, he was actually in the audience at a concert I went to a couple weeks ago. Chris, Christian McBride, the bass player, played here in the uh, San Fernando Valley at Cal State Northridge. And he called out Lalo Schifrin and said, this guy's one of my biggest uh, influences. And Lalo must be in his 80s. And he stood up and everybody applauded. And then Christian went on to do a 15-minute tune composed in his honor and in the style of him. So I saw a record for five ninety nine. Okay, I'll check it out. Kind of a weird record on Verve. It's about Marquis de Sade. Kind of a weird dude who introduced us all to sadism. Cruelty. Uh, so this is 1966, Van Gilder Studios, New Jersey. It's kind of a large orchestration, so there's not a lot of individual players that stand out but who's on here? 
Irby Green, J.J. Johnson, K. Winding, uh, Grady Tate. You know, there's a few decent players on here. The artwork is very bizarre. All this uh, sort of, what, 16th or 17th century weirdness. And uh, it's almost like a Halloween record in some respects. It's supposed to invoke scary, spooky Adams Family sort of weirdness. There's all this harpsichord at the beginning. It's kind of weird. I'm not sure if it's one of his best, but it is probably one of his weirdest. And uh, I don't mind weird stuff. I'll check anything out once. See what it's all about. All right, let's see. What else did I get? A couple other good things at this one used record store. Oh, don't forget. Nope, oh, watch it. Stuff's falling, up, falling all over the place. Bear with me, guys. Thank you. Uh, this store has a really a pretty okay classical selection, but it's on the ground. you got to get on your knees. and It's not in alphabetical order, so it's really hard to find anything. Kind of annoys me that they do that, but whatever. Beethoven. I got lots of Beethoven. This is a piece I've never seen before. The String Quartet number 131, except orchestrated for a big orchestra. Uh, Vienna Philharmonic with Leonard Bernstein conducting. So Beethoven string quartets are extremely dense, heavy pieces of music. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of lines and melodies and development and all that stuff. So to uh, actually do that with a big orchestra, that's kind of a challenge because there's so much going on. Uh, you don't want the sort of uh, different lines and melodies to muddy each other up. So I will check it out. Three ninety nine. I got a lot of Beethoven. That's one of the few Beethoven recording type things I don't have. All right, what's next? I bought one new record for myself. Larry Young, Blue Note. Larry Note Unit, Larry Note, Larry Young Unity on Blue Note is his most famous record. He's a uh, Hammond B3 organ player who uh, had like five or six really nice records for Blue Note. This is one of them, but it's like his second or third most famous one. Contrasts with, who's on it? A lot of people I don't know on it. I don't know any of these people. Eddie Wright guitar, Herbert Morgan tenor sax. Um, Unity is the one I want to get my hands on, and I also probably going to get the one on Resonance Records that they just discovered. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, he died really young, like age 37, 38. It's a shame, but he played with Miles Davis. He played with Jimi Hendrix. He had a a pretty accomplished career for a guy who didn't live that long. So, and then the nicest, most interesting one I got at uh, this used record store. Love this cover. MRC Records, uh, Jazz of Two Decades. So this is a compilation, and that was why it was only two ninety nine. but it's like 1950, probably 1956 or 1957. Love the cover. Uh, MRC, that's the initials M, R, C for Mercury Record Corp. So Mercury Records had a jazz uh, label, and they had some good good artists. So this is like a greatest hit sampler, whatever, of uh, MRC. And maybe nobody bought it because you can't tell what songs and what artists are on here. Uh, you got to kind of read all the narrative to figure out who's playing. So where's the, where's the record? You got to look at the record itself. You got to pull out the record, and it's one of these ridiculous round bottom sleeves and why is the sleeve two inches longer than, the, than it needs to be so jazz of the 40s uh coleman hawkins johnny hodges k winding lenny tristano and then jazz of the 50s even nicer cherokee by clifford brown and max roach that's you know clifford brown is kind of like their biggest artist uh sarah vaughn errol gardner Clark Terry on trumpet, Diana Washington, Dinah Washington, Julian Adderley, also known as Cannonball Adderley. Why is this only two ninety nine? It's got a bunch of great music on it. Well, compilations don't really uh, command a lot of money. Um, they're not considered as desirable as a, as an original artist release. But 
It's a good way to get to know artists you might not be familiar with. I like these for parties because you like the DJ. You throw on a record and you got five or six varied tunes on here. I like the artwork. Uh, let's see. Milt Hamilton on vibes. Sarah Vaughn singing. Who's playing bass? Uh, Count Basie. Art Blakey. Who else? Uh, I don't recognize all these people, but who's on sax there? That's Big Ben Webster, you can tell by the hat. Nice artwork. Okay, what else? Did I buy anything else at that store? There's more. Don't worry, guys. There's more. So, I had like, let's see, two thrift shops yesterday. Didn't get anything for either myself or the birthday, but right across the street, one in the afternoon, I come upon a nice um, uh, street fair. And it's in kind of a uh, working class Hispanic neighborhood. So what do I do? I go to the Chicarones man. The Chicarones booth. You guys know what these are? There's guys frying up these giant... I don't know what the heck these are. Pig something. Pig skin? Pig stomach? And uh, the lady didn't speak English at all. And I didn't speak Spanish very well. But these things are loud and fattening and fatty. And you take them home and you pour some salt and chili powder on it. This is really loud. Mmm. Chicarones. With some California beer, Anchor Steam. There's more stuff, guys. Hang on. We're not done. So today, after our lovely Mother's Day brunch, uh, this neighborhood also had a bunch of thrift stores. We hit two or three thrift stores. And we found one thrift store that had a bunch of records for three bucks, which is overpriced, crazy. Picked out two, not for me. For my wife, it's Mother's Day. Who do gurus? Who do gurus? Do you know them? Kind of like a 90s alternative uh, band. 1984 A&M Records. My wife has a bunch of their records. I don't know their music that well. It's got a kind of a good jangly guitar sound not too jangly not too wimpy it's a little it's a little more guitar-y than some of the wimpy bands that she likes but and they have a record called guitars I don't know this record I don't know if it's any good it's three bucks what do you want from me and then this one was sort of requested by my son really obscure record I've never seen before Bob Duro I don't know who Bill Takas is okay Bill Takas is the bass player Bob Duro, you guys all know him. You all love him. You just don't know who he is. Bob Duro, uh, singer, songwriter, piano player. He was the musical director of Schoolhouse Rock in the 70s. And I grew up with that stuff. He sang some of the tunes, but he was more involved as the uh, musical director, composer, uh, arranger. So he sang... Um, Three is a Magic Number. So he has a kind of high, airy voice that's not really super... You know, I don't know. It's good for kids, let's say. So my son saw this and he said he had to have this because there's one song on here he likes a lot called I'm Hip by Dave Frischberg. And uh, really funny, clever lyrics. I'm Hip is kind of a, uh, a jab, if you will, at hipsters. And, you know, 30, 40 years ago we had hipsters. We just have different ones now. There's actually a line in this song about... You know, they used to have beards and now they don't. Well, things have come back around. Now they have beards again. But it's kind of uh, a, a jab at people that are posers and going with the, the trends. And that reminded me of some tunes I heard uh, come up recently about Frank. Frank Zappa is always writing tunes about posers and phonies and people that are kind of obnoxious uh, and people that are trying to impress other people. Zappa has a bunch of songs kind of in that vein. Like uh, Dancing Fool and Disco Boy and Bobby Brown Goes Down and, you know, I don't know. Mazzy was talking about Mothers of Invention today because it's Mother's Day. I'm recording this on Mother's Day after all these gifts have been given. It just kind of reminded me that that's kind of a cool com comparison or similarity between that tune and Zappa. So Norwegian Wood is on here. Uh, what else? 
I don't know. I'm beginning to see the light. Oh, that's a Duke Ellington song? I didn't know that. Duke Ellington, Johnny Hodges. That's an old, old kind of jazz standard. So he's kind of like, you know, doing the clubs. Not a big recording artist, but more of a club guy and a background guy. I think that's it, guys. How many records did we get in one weekend? Like 10 or 12? Not 10 or 12. Every week I'm buying 10 or 12 records, and when am I going to listen to all these records, guys? I'm just going to chill out with my Anchor Steam California beer. Try to listen to some of these records. Try to digest all this food we ate for Mother's Day. All right, guys. Happy Mother's Day to all. Keep spinning the vinyl. Subscribe if you like. Let me know your comments, and thanks for watching.